What if Naruto started a series off with a power that to this current day actually keeps him at Kage level without the power of Kurama? What would happen if a young Naruto was born with the abilities of sage energy and was actually gifted this in the beginning of the entire series? How would this affect the Naruto universe and would this have a ripple effect on the rest of the series? You're going to be having to stick around to this multi-part series to find out. However, if you guys want to get early access to the videos and know what happens before literally anybody else does you guys can do so by becoming a member to the channel you guys get early access to the next part of the series and sometimes the entire series itself when i'm feeling extra generous to actually binge it yourselves so if that's something that interests you and you'd like to support the channel in one way or another then definitely consider becoming a member that said enjoy hey ross sauce it up We start a story at the day of Naruto's birth. We start with him opening his eyes to a strange color that actually mutates his look in the series. Naruto this time around would be born into the world legit absorbing a massive amount of natural chakra energy that would actually mutate him permanently. This would begin with a change in his eyes from blue to slowly turning purple and the change would pretty much solidify itself by the time that Minato would rip Naruto back from the masked man. The color of his hair would go from blonde to purple and the second that Naruto would leave the womb this transformation began that would lead to Minato holding Naruto in his arms and would actually lead him to actually wonder what happened to his young son. He would be about to put his son in the crib when suddenly he would wonder what this could mean for the world, seeing as his baby was just born with sage energy, something that Minato could definitely sense being a sage user himself. He then after this puts Naruto back into his crib and goes off to fight with that one thing on his mind, how Naruto was born with sage energy and how this happened in a way that it doesn't even transform Naruto into a sage creature much like all of the teachings that Mount Miyaboku would have taught him. This is when we suddenly get to the moment when Naruto was about to be impaled by the Ninetales Kurama. And both Kushina and Naruto, or sorry, Kushina and Minato throw themselves in the way of their young child to save his life. Like usual, Naruto would then be passed on to Hiruzen, who would end up actually raising Naruto, until one day Hiruzen realizes just how powerful strong and fast naruto is compared to everyone else he gives off a strange aura something familiar and it's one day when he's finally able to understand what it is when he watches naruto effortlessly move heavy objects for even grown adults at that stage naruto already possessed great sage energy and from this day forth hiruzen began to actually train naruto pretty much all the time seeing massive potential within naruto because he's the son of well the fourth okage minato and Kushina, a very powerful Jinchuriki in her own right. Plus, he's seen what Sage Mode can do with his master Hashirama and his pupil Jiraiya, one of the legendary Sanin. Plus, with Orochimaru having access to a slight level of Sage Mode and even Tsunade being a person who attempted to learn but it was too impossible for even her, this would definitely leave Hiruzen in a state of shock, not knowing exactly how to go about this, but knowing that he has to train this kid up, and so for the following three years since Naruto would be four at that point, Naruto would be learning Taijutsu and Chakra Control, which Naruto would find a bit difficult because of the Ninetales' influence within himself messing with his Chakra Pool. This would lead Naruto to becoming a ninja at the age of seven, and be under Hiruzen's Anbu squad, where he is, isn't is even actually tested by the other Anbu members, seeing as most of them would have actually ended up watching Naruto grow up, and some of them would have actually taken a very powerful liking to Naruto. And one person that Naruto actually took a liking to was Kakashi, someone who would often train Naruto in Hiruzen's absence. 
And something he liked about Naruto, Kakashi that is, is how similar he is to Itachi in potential. Somebody that Naruto does actually get to meet by the time that he is 7 years old, seeing as the uh, Chia massacre would happen in a couple of months from then. So Naruto would get to know a small bit about Itachi and realize just how powerful that member truly is. Getting to know of Shisui and all of the strange implications that the Uchiha clan. Naruto's potential would be great and he would often be compared to Itachi whenever he goes on missions and completes him. It's at, this mo it's at this moment in time that people would pretty much begin to compare the two more and more, not quite in talent yet, but in potential it would definitely be scary how strong Naruto was for his age. Being able to keep up with the fastest shinobi and the strongest, with its constant pool of sage energy that he draws that boosts his strength as he grows older, it's almost as if it's infinite levels of sage energy. I mean, Naruto's so fast and powerful that it's scary to any other ninja that would be even having the balls to try to even encounter Naruto in a fight or even go against what Naruto pleases and wants. He would go on various missions over the years and would actually be able to rise to the ranks of an Anbu captain at the age of 11. After only 4 years he managed to bring out the full potential of his sage energy and he was able to enhance his jutsus taught to him by Hiruzen, even gaining access to Monkey King Enma and its adamantian staff form when he turns 10 years old. Old. Naruto is a literal machine, working day in and out, and never running out of fumes. He just trains, trains, and trains. Hiruzen would often ask Naruto about this, wondering if he ever gets tired of training. Naruto would simply tell Hiruzen that training is something that will never tire him, because Naruto will never be satisfied with the strength that he has. He's like a gym bro. You know, he's always going to have body dysmorphia. If you guys get that reference, then you are elite members of this channel because you are alpha weebs. Anyways though, basically, Naruto would be very, very powerful by the age of 10, and by the age of 11, Naruto would have pretty much just refined a couple more techniques and also ripped off Kakashi's lightning blade, except he made it in a way that it was actually perfected, the way that Kakashi would have by the time that the war was all over and now he had the purple lightning blade. That's exactly what Naruto has in his possession. Not the Chidori, which is going to give him tunnel vision, but a jutsu that is with lightning chakra nature and has been based off of the Chidori itself. Naruto is a machine much like I said earlier and by the time that he is old enough to enter into the academy, he does. He's just dropped into team 7 by the time that the graduation was about to happen. And seeing as he was dropped in there and Kakashi was relieved of his previous duties alongside everyone else, Naruto would simply be plopped into the team with Sasuke and Sakura. Going to the day of introductions where Naruto simply goes on to state that he enjoys training and he enjoys powerful opponents and he hates cowards and weaklings who complain all the time. That's the one thing Naruto can't stand. He takes part in the bell test obviously and tries to convince Sasuke of teaming with him but he flat out refuses, saying that he doesn't follow anybody and to get out of his way. Sasuke being the prick that he was at the original would obviously think that he's too high and mighty for Naruto with his god complex obviously flaring up and this would definitely get under the skin of Naruto, seeing as something he doesn't like are people who think that they're better than everyone else. Naruto was learned not to get along with people like that so he would get extremely frustrated so he would simply just go on to use a simple genjutsu on Sasuke to make him do what he wants and actually submit to Naruto's orders, something that he would rarely have to do in the Anbu whenever one of his subordinates wouldn't be willing to listen to his orders. Anytime that somebody would have to stay behind and die for the team, Naruto would simply use a genjutsu to get another member to do what must be done. And seeing as Sakura simply follows Sasuke like a dog, just follows along with no rhyme or reason behind it. Naruto acts as a decoy, allowing Sakura to jump in and attempt to take the bells for Sasuke to be the real target and pop out and manage to actually snatch both bells, leading to Kakashi actually accepting Team 7 and ultimately Naruto confronting Sasuke after everything was said and done. Naruto would leave the area and tail Sasuke on his way back home as Sasuke was wondering what happened. Happened. His memory became hazy and he was he was just pretty much having internal issues with himself about just what that was. That said, 
This is when Naruto would pretty much decide that he's going to be confronting Sasuke about his issues way earlier than he would have in canon. And with no ties to Sasuke or familiarity, he really doesn't have to hold back with any of his words. He goes over to Sasuke, jumps out of a tree, and Sasuke would get completely caught off guard by Naruto who simply stands before him and tells him if he's serious about becoming a ninja, telling him that if he is, he better take it seriously. Sasuke simply looks back to Naruto and asks if you know what that's supposed to mean, and Naruto says it's exactly what you think it means, telling him that being a ninja isn't a game, that if he wasn't isn't willing to put the work in, then he shouldn't be a ninja, telling him to put a sad sob story behind him or he'll die out there just like the rest of his clan, as Sasuke would clench his fist and say you don't know anything about them, don't disrespect my clan, saying that you know, he doesn't know anything and that he's just a uh, nobody who was thrown into the clan and that he wasn't even in the academy. But Naruto looks back to Sasuke and says, you're right, I wasn't in the academy because I was too busy completing hundreds, if not thousands of Anbu missions in the time that you were twiddling your fingers in the back of that classroom, probably simply thinking that you were the best while someone out there every single day was out there training way harder than you could have ever imagined. Blood, sweat, tears, broken bones every day to get as powerful as I am today. As he would scoff at him and spit across the floor, looking at Sasuke's eyes as he tells him that if he knows Itachi, and he does, he's definitely out there training, and he won't be beat by a weakling like him, saying that he knows exactly what Sasuke's goal is, to kill Itachi, asking him if he's ever questioned why Itachi even did what he did, saying even, even though he never knew Itachi on a personal level, even he has to understand that there was a rhyme and reason behind what he did. It wasn't scentless blood kill since that's not who Itachi was, telling him that he needs to open his eyes and forget that god complex that he clearly has, telling him that he's not better than everybody else just because he has some crimson eyes, telling him that he is not going to be pushed around or ordered like he has done to everyone else in his life, telling Sasuke that he needs to be in you know, he needs to prepare for the real world because the real world is going to eat someone like him alive if he doesn't get ready in the next couple of weeks, telling him that that's all he wanted to say and that he better be on his A game the next time they meet, not pressed about who's following whose orders. Every now and then they're going to have to do something that they don't like and Naruto one day might have to follow his orders. So he needs to make sure that Sasuke knows how to lead. And so this would actually anger Sasuke, leading him to try to fight Naruto, who would pretty much go on to make it very clear that he has hands for days and tell Sasuke that someone who has talent and doesn't train as hard as he should, shouldn't deserve the talent that he has. As he walks away, telling him, him that he's a pathetic Uchiha who doesn't even deserve the Sharingan, much less even have it, and tells him that all of his years in the Anbu have pretty much made him way stronger than he could have ever imagined. As he walks away, and Naruto simply thinks back to all of those rough training sessions he had with Hiruzen, with Anbu, with Kakashi, as we now cut into a different POV where I'm just going to explain to you guys why Naruto acts the way he does. Now Naruto in this version is going to be very very blunt about what he feels and is going to be a very strategic thinker, thinking about a hundred moves ahead of everybody around him. Naruto's not your everyday average ninja, he is precise, calculated, and cold when he has to be, rid of the fear of killing. Naruto will do what he has to, and he does have a bit of that old personality that we would have come to know and love, but Naruto this time around has become more serious, more mature, at a faster rate than he would have in the original. Not being dumb to simple crushes like the original Naruto would be. And so, after this, we have about two weeks worth of lame missions, so we're just going to skip through them and get to the eventual encounter with the two demon brothers, who were rapidly taken down by Naruto the second that they pounced towards the direction of Tazuna. Immediately, Naruto would simply weave three hand times before saying, Lightning Blade, and cutting their heads clean off in an instant, as he then turns towards the direction of Kakashi, and as he asks, how was that? And Kakashi would turn to Naruto before telling him that that was very impressive. Naruto would smirk as they continue on, and Sasuke is left wondering just how powerful Naruto truly is. And oh boy, is he about to find out. 
Anyways though, the team would continue and about one hour later they would encounter a member of the seven legendary swordsmen of the mist, Zabuza Momochi. When they do so, he immediately begins to tell the team that he is there for the head of Tazuna. Nothing more, nothing less. Going on to tell them that they have about two options here. They hand him over or they die and he dies as well. Regardless, this entire situation ends with Zabuza's death. Naruto looks at Zabuza and wonders how powerful one of these members could truly be, never having encountered one of them in his life, so Naruto simply goes on to grab his sword that he has behind himself as he unsheaths it and looks to Zabuza asking him if he bleeds, as he suddenly rushes at the direction of Zabuza who is forced to jump away leaving his sword engraved into the tree that it was stabbed into. Naruto would rush Rush in with his blade as Zabuza would be forced to, um, you know, to pretty much back up, seeing as he was shocked at how powerful a Genin would, was being, pushing him back with even Zabuza being caught off guard and being nicked a couple of times with Zabuza's, you know, with Zabuza's skill. Not knowing that Naruto would have been as powerful as he, you know, is being the stature and size that he is. Zabuza eventually would kick Naruto away and would rush in towards the direction of his sword as Kikashi would kick Zabuza back, telling him that there are no fair fights here. Going on to essentially pretty much jump Zabuza as Kikashi ruthlessly just lunges in with a shine gun up and begins to throw many attacks that would actually catch Zabuza off guard. At this current moment, Haku would be hiding behind the trees wondering if he should jump in as Zabuza would begin to get absolutely curb stomped by Naruto and Kakashi who were both just putting that work in. Eventually the five Senban needles would come flying into the direction of Kakashi and Naruto as they are able to dodge and gain distance and suddenly Zabuza's partner in crime would arrive, Haku, as Zabuza rushes towards a sword and grabs it off the tree and suddenly looks back to the direction of Naruto and Kakashi, saying, well, 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 aren't they even stacked against you now? What will you do now, Shinobi? As suddenly, we then cut to Sasuke just watching this in just disbelief. Naruto's keeping up with Kakashi and Sasuke, all he can do is sit there in terror. Sasuke has one thought in the back of his mind, do something, help. How do I become useful in the situation? But nothing comes to mind. Sasuke is scared out of his mind and he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to say. Naruto is just simply beating down on Haku with a sword as Haku's using Senbon and trying to out Speed Naruto, trying to get an opening for the Crystal Mirror Jutsus, but Naruto is a different animal. He's not leaving a second to breathe for Haku. He's not allowing Haku to power up, to use some insane Jutsu, because Naruto was trained to kill and to get the job done fast. Naruto is not wasting time, and eventually he would end up cutting off the head of Haku. As Haku's head would roll down onto the ground, Kakashi would end up finishing his part of the job after having tricked Zabuza into thinking that he can see the future. A Chidori would pierce the stomach and heart of Zabuza and uh, sorry, I, I said stomach and heart, but more specifically heart, as Zabuza would cough blood out onto Kakashi's face, and Sasuke would simply watch as Naruto would murder somebody coldlessly and effortlessly, as if he had simply just taken a walk to the park or something. It was nothing to Naruto. Naruto turns back to the direction of Tazuna, Sasuke, and Sakura, and tells them that it's about time to continue the mission, looking to Sasuke before telling him that he better be ready to carry Kakashi the entire way there. Seeing as he's simply been there watching that Sakura can simply hold her kunai out and be on watch. Naruto's gonna be relaxing. He would go on to take a nap and eventually the boat ride would end, leading them to arrive just outside of Tazuna's home where Tsunami would be waiting for them all to arrive. Suddenly, they begin greeting each other and Kakashi would be put down in the other room when suddenly Inari would make his presence known to the team and would begin to essentially disrespect Team 7 saying that they're just going to lose to Gato anyways. Naruto has a way of not letting these insults get to him because after all it's a kid so and he's been trained to not lash out. So Naruto's emotions are well kept in check and there is no outburst for Naruto. No moment of trying to change Inari like there would have been in the original. Because Naruto's mission isn't help Inari. Naruto's mission is help the bridge builder and keep him safe until the bridge was finished. And that's exactly what Naruto intends to do. 
two weeks would pass and eventually Kakashi would wake up out of that strange state that he found him in and actually no let's say one week would pass and Kakashi wakes up and another week would pass um essentially consisting of Sakura Kakashi Naruto and Sasuke completing the tree walking training and learning a couple of jutsus Sasuke would go on to ask Kakashi you know how it is Naruto had that same jutsu that Kakashi was using and Kakashi goes on to tell Sasuke that if he wants to catch up to Naruto he better be willing to put in that work looking outside to see Naruto training just like usual and that's something that Naruto finally and that's something that Sasuke would finally realize Naruto was always training anytime that he wasn't on a mission Naruto was training anytime that Naruto wasn't eating Naruto was training and this is a message that that would finally get across to Sasuke. He needs to train even harder. So for the following day, Sasuke would not stop training. All he would think to do is train, 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 which would lift up Sasuke's power level way, way faster than it would have in the original and would give Sasuke a major boost in his strength, giving him a rival to try to reach up to in Naruto. Eventually, the day would come, however, when they would be on the bridge and suddenly Gato's ship would arrive. Naruto, without any second thoughts, would simply proceed to create a water wave jutsu, which would tumble over the boat that they would arrive in, leading to many of the people inside of it actually drowning, and the few that wouldn't drown would make it onto land only to be killed by Naruto's shadow clones. Eventually, when Gato would land onto the shore, Naruto would be there waiting for him to essentially throw him to the villagers of the land hidden in the waves and would pretty much let them do whatever it is that they wanted which is i'm just gonna say it rated our content that i'm not gonna cover but Zgato, just to put it lightly, would get what he deserves. And eventually, after this is all said and done, the bridge would be named the Great Naruto Bridge, like in canon, leading to the team returning to Kanoha, only to brief Hiruzen on all the events that had just transpired. Kakashi would tell Naruto that he did a great job, like usual, and Naruto would tell Kakashi that he needs to train harder to make sure that that Sharingan deficiency doesn't get them killed one day. Kakashi would tell Naruto that he used to be the one to tell him to train harder. Harder. and now that the roles are reversed he thinks he's all a big shot isn't he naruto would say that he's not a big shot but even kakashi himself knows that he's been slacking through these past couple of years on his training that a lot that a couple of years ago no ninja in the hidden leaf village could have compared to you your ruthlessness your skills but you've let yourself go kakashi he walks out of the room and suddenly sasuke sakura and hiruzen are dumbfounded as hiruzen simply thinks that maybe it wasn't the best choice to enlist naruto and the anbu at such a young such a young age not letting naruto experience what it's like to be himself to have a personality not just simply think about missions and getting stronger he regrets that but it's too far gone for anything to be done at this point. And suddenly, we're now going to be cutting into a different perspective, which would actually be the perspective of Naruto as he turns the corner and sees Kanahamaru as well as his three little friends getting picked on by Konkuro, who at this current moment was holding Kanahamaru up by his shirt, telling him if he has some sort of death wish. Naruto, upon seeing this, would turn to Kanahamaru as you know Konohamaru asked Naruto to save him and Naruto definitely does oblige seeing as that's the grandson of you know the man who trained him when he was younger he's definitely gonna save his life Naruto walks in casually strolls in and walks past Konohamaru before then looking at Konkuro with a death stare and asking him if he wishes to start another great war Konkuro would ask him what he's talking about and Naruto would simply say, you know, that's the third Hokage's grandson you're holding up by the throat. As Konkuro immediately drops him and begins to pretty much plea that he had no idea, that he's sorry. And Naruto would then ask him, so if that was any other Leaf citizen, you would have damaged them with no regard for their lives, and that would have been fine? Leaf Shinobi, or, you know, um, third, uh, third Hokage's grandson or not, that was un forgivable he would begin to get ready to pretty much begin fighting Konkuro when suddenly we would actually see one of the you know um one of the jonin walk past and begin to essentially calm the situation down telling naruto that they are here in good graces 
for the Chunin exams. Naruto then goes on to explain that the Chunin exams is where he's going to be getting that treatment he deserves that he got saved from today. And Kakuro would have a ton of sweat dropping down seeing as he could just sense overwhelming power coming off of Naruto. Keep in mind, Naruto is not on the level of any of these ninjas that are even in the series as of this current moment. He took Haku out very blatantly quickly, and I want you guys to understand that Naruto is not weak at all. This time around, Naruto is about as broken as you can possibly get. You do not get any stronger. He has a perfect sage mode, a balanced sage mode his defense his offense his senses his speed everything is amped to incredible levels and as every second on that watch turns naruto gets stronger and stronger by the minute it's like a continuous zenkai boost it's incredible how strong this constant sage energy within him pushes naruto strength day by day and that's why naruto is able to keep up with some of the greatest in the naruto series as early as he is able to at this moment that said though, eventually the day would come when Kakashi briefs the team about the Chunin exams and Naruto would of course go on to accept, saying that he, you know, obviously was already a Jonin, but the team can't just go with two members, right? Haruzen agrees and says that Naruto, while he does want Naruto to go into the Chunin exams, he's not sure if Naruto with his level of, you know, combat power should even be allowed. Plus, Sage energy isn't allowed either. So Naruto is ultimately not allowed to take part in said Chunin exams, leading to Sasuke and Sakura getting ambushed immediately by Orochimaru, who would leave Sasuke with a curse mark to pass out, only for the sound getting to find them later on and Rock Lee to save them. When Sasuke had a massive outburst with the curse mark, he ended up actually killing the entirety of the sound team due to the fact that there was no Naruto there to try to stop him. Actually, scratch that, Sakura was the one who calmed them down. So just like in the original, Sasuke would not kill them, and they would eventually make their way towards the tower, where he would beg Sakura not to inform anybody of the curse mark, and she wouldn't do so. So Sasuke would have to battle with this curse mark power and never even have it sealed. This would lead to Sasuke battling the man who could absorb Chakra through nothing but a simple touch. Having that fight, Sasuke would still win, and eventually during the period in time when Sasuke would go off during that month to train with Kakashi, Kakashi would find out about the curse mark and seal it, informing Sasuke that power like that is not something that he should take lightly, that it will consume him the more that he uses it, saying that it is a dark power. But Sasuke doesn't care. He wants to catch up to Naruto more than he wants to even catch up to Itachi at this point because he feels belittled by him and he doesn't like that feeling of knowing that there's somebody stronger than him at his age level. He trains even harder than he would have during this period in time just due to the fact that not only has he taken an L to Naruto but he took an L to even uh, Lee who he didn't even expect to lose to, but Lee was so fast without those weights, it was incredible just how strong that random kid with bushy eyebrows was. Eventually, Naruto would meet up with Sasuke during the one month training, and actually, no, no, he wouldn't, sorry. He would meet up with Sakura, and you know they would converse a little bit, and eventually Naruto would have one day where he decides to finally relax and not train. That one singular day would actually mark the appearance of the legendary Sani Jiraiya, who ends up running into Naruto, where he's pretty much told about his status as a Sanin and his, you know, ability to go into Sage mode. Naruto, upon seeing Jiraiya, would ask him how far along he is with the Sage mode power, saying that he's a Sage, so he should definitely have the ability to access Sage mode. Jiraiya goes on to pretty much bluff, saying that he has perfect access to Sage mode and Naruto would ask to see it, before suddenly telling him that from what he can sense within Jiraiya, he has a pitiful excuse for Sage mode, telling him that Jiraiya has a very incomplete, weird, strange, weak version of what Naruto has, before flaring his Sage energy and Jiraiya seeing just like a, a strange aura, like a 
a, a strange creature behind Naruto, just a pure energy. It's not anything this world has ever seen, and Jiraiya would question how Naruto has sage energy before, you know, Naruto says that he was born that way. From when he can remember, Naruto has always had sage energy. And Jiraiya would be quite shocked, going on to have more and more interactions with Naruto, and eventually leading to Naruto and Jiraiya training together, except instead of Naruto learning things from Jiraiya, the only thing that he would truly have to learn would essentially just be the Rasengan, which Naruto already would have learned from Kakashi Sensei, so it wasn't much of a learning experience, so instead, the only thing that Naruto was there to do was to essentially help Jiraiya with his perfecting of Sage Mode. They would go Go to Mount Miyaboku where Naruto would be introduced to sage creatures and Naruto would have a certain liking to them. They would enjoy his company but Naruto would ultimately state that learning something like sage that toad sage mode wouldn't be very beneficial to him seeing as he has natural sage mode. Something that doesn't require a certain training regimen that he was born with. The Toad would be quite perplexed by this and say that he might someday be the one in the prophecy, but Naruto simply states maybe, and obviously Jiraiya would get a lot stronger, and eventually the day would come when Sasuke is in the ring against Skara. They're both about to face off, and we suddenly have the battle, which actually goes off with Neji versus somebody else who would have taken Naruto's place in the tuning exams. Neji would of course win this time around seeing as there's nobody there to use his insanely powerful tailed beast to defeat him and so Neji was able to actually move on to the final rounds of the tuning exams. Sasuke would fight off against Gara. he would lunge to the air, he would begin immediately charging up his most powerful jutsu, Naruto would be in the stands watching as Sasuke performs the, the hand signs for the Chidori and would simply smirk as he looks to Kakashi and moves one finger tapping it rapidly, saying, you taught him that jutsu, didn't you? And Kakashi would look back to the direction of Naruto before then being all like, guilty as charged. Naruto would chuckle, and suddenly we switch back to Sasuke who screams, CHIDORI! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we continue on with the video, I first have to tell you guys about the sponsors of today's video, which is going to be Some Slight Clothing and Fandom. Now, both of these companies specialize in their own unique things. Fandom specializes in hoodie wear, shirts, and anime streetwear things that you guys can mainly find, such as, you know, hoodies, jackets, and stuff like that. Some slight clothing, on the other hand, specializes in anime shorts and cool One Piece designs, Demon Slayer designs, and notably, any other animes that they got on the website. Recently, they just dropped the Jujutsu Kaisen line, so if you guys are, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen fans, you guys could definitely check that out. Up on screen, there should be a couple of of panels showing you guys either fandom or some slight clothing shorts and if you guys see anything that you guys like and want to buy something you guys can go down below to the description use my code zether for each and get a crispy 10% off of anything you guys end up buying which helps out the channel greatly that said let's get right back into the what if now this normally would be the part where I immediately jump back in and start telling you guys about how Gara pretty much gets pierced with the Chidori and he starts screaming, being like, my blood, you know what I mean? He just starts going crazy because the dude's never seen his blood before. But before I get into that, I quickly just want to say sorry if my voice annoys you guys for the remaining of this video. Your boy actually has a huge case of a cold allergies and your, your boy was previously dying about an hour ago. But then I realized, that I can't sit there and whine and feel sorry for myself that the grind don't ever stop. So I got to come back because I got people waiting for the series to finish and I got people waiting for more series to come out. I can't sit there and do nothing. So we're going to hop right back into it. And I hope you guys go on to enjoy the rest of this video. Please leave a like or something because your boy is struggling at the moment. And I'm about to have to use my voice for like the following next 40 to 30 minutes. That said, let's get right back into the what if? All right, so obviously we now have Sasuke rushing in, Gara screams, you know, the, the little attack on the village goes down just like it would in the original, and obviously from here we basically have Naruto going off into the forest after Kakashi orders him to do so, and pretty much go off to try to save Sasuke. Now obviously we have Shino versus Konkuro go down, then we have Tamari versus, I don't know who she fought in the original, was it Shikamaru? Was it Shikamaru? I'm not sure. But Tamari versus whoever it is that she ended up combating in the original. 
and then eventually we jump into the battle between Sasuke and Gara. And speaking of Gara and Sasuke and Naruto and all of these things, really quick tangent. Have you guys seen Mr. Beast's new like thing that he uploaded about saying that he, how much would it cost to reanimate the entirety of Naruto? Dude, if we get something like that, Mr. Beast, the dude will be go down in history as the biggest Naruto fan ever. But that's besides the point. So anyways, we now get into the segment of the story where Sasuke is about to pretty much get folded and Gaara is about to kill this dude. But suddenly in a blinding flash, we have Naruto using the uh, the body flicker to essentially grab Sasuke and move him out of the way before he could have gotten killed. Sasuke looks back to Naruto and says, what are you doing, Naruto? I had him. Naruto just slams him onto the ground and tells him to stay put as he says he would have died in that attack, that his attack was too weak to harm him before then jumping off and rushing over to Gara's direction, where he begins to essentially use the sage mode to slowly begin overpowering Gara. And since Gara is a bit stronger than Naruto would have expected, he has to actually pump his sage chakra into his normal attacks that would make it so hard for Gara to keep up with in that state that eventually he transforms into his gigantic form. Naruto says that he was tired of this and immediately ends up summoning Monkey King Enma, telling him, that he needs to back him up this one time. Monkey rushes and, you know, hits Naruto up into the air. Naruto goes on to weave jutsus for shadow clones. The shadow clones throw him towards the direction of, you know, Gara on, on top of Shukaku, right? And Shukaku tries to throw a hand to hit him midair, but Naruto summons more clones to redirect his trajectory. And he just starts flying through the air, basically rushing towards the direction of Gara. when suddenly Naruto says, checkmate. And he pretty much unsheaths his blade and just cuts Gara's head clean off leading to Gara dying and Shukaku sadly having to pass away with Gara. Gara's head falls onto the ground and Naruto lands on top of all that sand cushioning his blow as Naruto would simply say that it had to be done. He was pretty much destroying their village so in the eyes of Naruto he was a threat and threats have to be neutralized. Sasuke seeing this would just think about how out of his league he is compared to naruto obviously he felt belittled by him in the land of the waves arc but this is just different this this is different pain like obviously we get it like you, you see your friend fighting somebody you couldn't fight but plot twist you then see them fighting a world champion or something like that and they're beating them you know what i mean like you train you thought you got stronger you thought you guys were equals plot twist the dude is way stronger than you even more than you could have ever imagined so now sasuke is extra salty and now after naruto finishes his mission he immediately grabs sasuke and tells him to come along that they don't have any more time conqueror and tamari arrive and they see what naruto did to their younger brother giving him hateful eyes just being angry at the fact that he killed their brother but naruto says that they have nothing to be angry they betrayed kanoha and however you look at it naruto won't be looked at as the person who was in the wrong in this situation tamari and konkuro accept that they can't say anything and naruto tells them to go bury that piece of garbage somewhere else that he doesn't belong in kanoha's borders before Konkuro and Tamari would walk off with their younger brother Gara, and Naruto looks back to Sasuke and tells him, and you, because you ran off to fight Gara, now I left the village unprotected, so any deaths that I wasn't there to prevent are on you, Sasuke. You made those deaths happen. Sasuke just says, be quiet, Naruto, and runs off, and Naruto goes back to the village, only to pretty much find out that everything had finally blown over, and Haruzen was dead. Naruto hearing this revelation that his master that had been training him since he was about four years old just died, it would hit him like a train. Obviously in the original, Hiruzen was the one who made sure that Naruto stayed fed, had money, had a roof over his head, but he was never there. He was not a prevalent figure for Naruto. This Naruto looked at him like his own grandpa and now feeling the sense of despair that came over him after finding out that his whole person that has been taking care of him for his whole life just died, he feels genuine anger, hatred for Sasuke almost. Because if it wasn't for Sasuke running off, if he would have simply let him die, Hiruzen would still be alive. Naruto would be angry and even Kakashi would try to sway Naruto's thoughts of this, telling him to think rationally, that even if Sasuke didn't run off, 
who knows if the Hokage would have won with you there present whatsoever. Naruto would say that Orochimaru would have died to his hand if he was there to fight him, and Naruto would vow to one day slay Orochimaru and make sure that Orochimaru gives what's coming to him for killing his master. Naruto after this goes off to train for about one week until eventually Jiraiya pops up and asks him if he's willing to go with him to essentially find Tsunade and bring back a new Hokage. Naruto tells Jiraiya that he can just he can just get lost right now because he's not in the mood to go on some mission. And Jiraiya explains to him that while he might not be in the mood, it could be a good chance to connect with his godfather. Naruto hearing this would look at Jiraiya strangely before asking, what did you just say? And Jiraiya finally reveals, Naruto, I'm your godfather. Why do you think I've put so much attention to you, huh? Naruto immediately packs his bags and goes off with Jiraiya to learn more about his said godfather, immediately going off and finding himself in a hotel about two weeks later, where eventually he ends up getting ambushed by the Akatsuki members Itachi and Kisame. Both of them would end up knocking on Naruto's door, and Naruto using his sage and his senjutsu or his sage mode would be able to basically sense exactly what's happening behind that door. Naruto, without wasting a single second, would create a shadow clone and he would stand right behind it as said shadow clone would open the door the shadow clone would immediately get pierced by kisame's blade right in the arm as the shadow clone pops and naruto would be seen jumping out the window making it to the top of the building where he suddenly weaves a jutsu of fireball that shoots up into the air to pretty much alert jiraiya as kisame and itachi both know now that jiraiya is definitely going to be on the move now and naruto looks back to kisame and itachi telling them that it's not very fair that it's going to be a two-on-one now is it especially against a kid. Naruto asks them if they have any sense of honor whatsoever, and Kisame looks at Itachi before telling him that he could gladly take on the pipsqueak right here, right now. Itachi's about to pretty much protest to this, but Kisame's already in battle mode, and Kisame's pretty much already unsheathing his blade, getting ready to go kill Naruto, when suddenly... Naruto closes his eyes and opens them, revealing an eye pattern that Kisame had never seen in Naruto before in his life. Naruto's eyes glow a strange aura, and Kisame is shocked. He's like, what's going on, right? But Naruto lunges in with the adamantium staff that, you know, Monkey King Enma literally just turned into, and he would go on to pretty much hit against Kisame's sword that begins to clash. Naruto's using a staff, Kisame's using a sword, and they're actually going back and forth. Naruto is keeping up with Kisame's strength. I know that Kisame isn't exactly the most overpowered character in the verse, but around this time, Kisame was at least top 10. Naruto is among the top 10 strongest characters in the verse. Literally, just let that sink into your head. Naruto begins using all of the things that he had been learning throughout the time, using body flickers, kicks, sweeps, punches, using the adamantium staff to just swing at Kisame, dodge, parry, all until eventually Jiraiya arrives and activates his perfect sage mode finally with the toad mouth jutsu leading to itachi wanting to escape using a madarasu and finally giving naruto the chance to essentially finally cool down and talk to jiraiya asking him if they were truly there thinking that they were going to be getting anything from him suddenly sasuke comes running in being like wait no itachi I'll kill you someday, right? You know, he screams at his brother who's running away now. And Naruto looks back to Sasuke before telling him that he's never going to be killing Itachi. Telling him that Itachi's way out of his league. And from what he just saw, Itachi's about five times stronger than what he can remember. His chakra pulls high, but there's something wrong with him. It's almost as if his physical body had gotten weaker. Naruto begins to wonder what exactly it is that was causing Itachi's signature to just feel strange. But eventually it clicks in his mind. Itachi's sick. With Naruto's sensory ability, he's able to detect, uh, detect things like that. So it wasn't exactly the rarest thing in the world for Naruto to be able to recognize that Itachi was sick and that clearly there was something wrong with him, right? So that's what Naruto's able to do. And we essentially jump back into the story with Sasuke, you know, telling Naruto that he has no idea what he's talking about, that as the last Uchiha, it's his, you know, it's his duty to kill Itachi. Naruto laughs in his face and tells him with his strength, he'll never kill anybody. And Sasuke says that he could start with him if he would like, before Naruto would tell him that he better calm down, or does he not remember who bailed him out of the last mission? As Sasuke grits his teeth and Jiraiya pats, you know, puts his hand on, uh, you know, Sasuke, 
pretty much waiting for uh, Mike Guy to arrive and escort Sasuke back to the village while Naruto and Jiraiya go off to find Orochimaru, or sorry, Tsunade. Eventually, with the encounter with Orochimaru, you know, basically everything that happened in the original with Tsunade disrespecting the Kage still happens. Naruto being who he is in this in this version, being in this state of just anger, unsure, being sad, would let his emotions get the best of him and he would slam the table telling Tsunade that she has no right to disrespect the previous Kage. Hiruzen died for his village, his father died for this village and she has done nothing but waste her life away drinking booze, saying that a better Kage would even be Jirai, even with his perverted nature. Tsunade cracks a joke about how Jirai would be the worst Kage ever, and Naruto goes on to tell Tsunade that the village doesn't need her, going off to walk outside, before Tsunade finally says, we could take this outside, brat. Naruto then smiles and says, you know what, maybe this could be a moment to take advantage. He then tells Tsunade that, you know, what if he, he, he can beat her in a fight? Tsunade smiles and says he if he could beat her in a fight with only with with her only using one finger she'll go back and become Kage and hey you know what she'll even throw in this necklace showing it off to Naruto as Naruto would simply think that this is gonna be the easiest bet he has ever won Naruto would begin it by simply analyzing Tsunade and realizing that this isn't going to be an easy battle. She would immediately slam her finger down onto the ground, shattering it, leading Naruto to have the perfect opportunity to jump into the air and throw a kunai at the direction of Tsunade. Naruto thinks that all he has to do is land one blow, right? So that's exactly what he'll do. Tsunade would dodge it by slightly moving her head towards the opposite direction of the kunai, and immediately she would say, you missed. Naruto smiles and doesn't even do the cliche, did I thing, but he literally just smirks and says, flying Raijin, as suddenly he appears by the kunai, catching it mid-air, as Tsunade looks back to Naruto and is like, what? And Naruto just slams a Rasengan straight into her back blowing her back out as naruto pretty much ends up winning the wager and now she has to go and become the kage right obviously now she can't even honor her deal with orochimaru so she ends up spilling her guts and telling jiraiya about that situation and now jiraiya naruto um Tsunade are all aware of this and naruto's thinking that he finally has a chance to kill orochimaru that he's gonna do it and that orochimaru is going down that today is the day he dies Obviously, this is a week in Orochimaru. He doesn't have the use of his hands. And when the battle starts, I'm going to be as blunt as I could possibly be. Kabuto, he gets like he gets pimp slapped. It's pretty much what happens to him. Naruto looks at Kabuto and is like, bro, get out of the way. Kabuto starts being like, no, I won't. I analyzing the situation. I'm going to actually beat you. Taking out a kunai and, you know, being all smart or whatever. Naruto takes one good look at him and just goes, bro. I'm gonna kill you and naruto just blitzes at kabuto who is shocked and naruto just slams the rasengan straight into his stomach just completely incapacitating kabuto as he then goes on to pretty much summon monkey king enma and appears side by side with jiraiya and tsunade who at this point are both trying to fight orochimaru orochimaru you know cuts himself and reveals a bit of blood and tsunade immediately begins to you know show off her weakness Naruto begins to laugh at her and tell her that it's pitiful that somebody who's going to become a Kage is afraid of a little blood, much less a medical ninja. She immediately looks at him and asks that and says that he doesn't know what he's talking about, and Orochimaru rushes at her first, but Naruto defends Tsunade, kicking the snake Manda out of the way and basically appearing on top of the head of the snake that Orochimaru's on as he begins to fight Orochimaru with hand-to-hand -hand combat, the likes that Orochimaru would have never expected from a Genin asking where this gaining came from. He never witnessed anybody like this in the tuning exams. Naruto would say that he's not a genin. He's a jonin, and he's a jonin at the age of 13. He begins fighting more and more against Orochimaru, and Orochimaru basically starts getting extremely worried, thinking that this might be another one of those Itachi cases, where he gets completely outclassed by somebody weaker than him. I mean, it might be, it might not be. We're not really sure considering Orochimaru doesn't have the movement of his arms currently. So it's kind of a, you know, half and half thing where it, it might be because Naruto's stronger or it might be because of that huge handicap that Orochimaru currently has going on for him. Obviously, the use of his arms are probably going to be a huge reason as to why Naruto's able to keep up as much as he is right now. But you never know. It might be something else. It might not be that. You know what I mean? So it's like... Um, 
But regardless of that said fact, we basically jump back into the battle and now Jiraiya is rushing at him with perfect sage mode. Now Orochimaru is scared. He has two sages rushing at him and Tsunade is just in the background being like, I can't fight him. I can't. I can't blood you know just like feeling sorry for herself honestly naruto screams out at her to tell her to stop being so worthless on the battlefield that none of the comrades that she lost in battle would feel proud seeing her in the way that she is now saying that she is a mere shadow of what she was before saying that she's not a legendary sonin that she's a legendary loser Tsunade hearing that name for like the hundredth time would finally snap and something inside of her would tell her that she has to act and act now. And suddenly we then get this awesome moment where Tsunade finally realizes that Naruto, well, he's right. Naruto is spitting straight facts and nothing Tsunade could say could potentially fight back against what Naruto is saying. Let's be honest. Naruto at this current moment is flaming Tsunade beyond all comprehension and it's pretty funny honestly because we have this moment where Naruto's still fighting against Orochimaru and Orochimaru is pretty much forced to retreat. Naruto gets pretty angry at the fact that he didn't get to kill Orochimaru and this is going to come back to haunt him later. Not really but it might. So then they end up taking Tsunade back to the village. She ends up healing all who were pretty much damaged by the raid ends up healing Kakashi and you know pretty much reinstates herself as the brand new Kage making it so that Danzo is not the one who's able to slither into that brand new position that said what ends up pretty much happening following this situation is we have about three days worth of nothing going on in the village when suddenly Sasuke is reportedly left the village he's fled it and Sasuke is actively trying to leave right <clears throat> we have this moment where naruto hears this and just thinks oh my god sasuke again first he doesn't help out in the next the first mission then he's the sole reason haruzen died because if he wouldn't have rushed off to fight gara maybe haruzen would still be alive and now he's gonna be a pain in my side and make me have to go on another worthless mission to bring him back I'm gonna bring him back Tsunade, but I want the heaviest charges you could place on Sasuke to be placed the second he returns to the village. Tsunade says that she'll think about it, and so Naruto embarks on this mission to essentially return Sasuke to the village, and once he does this, the mission pretty much goes down like in canon exactly how it would. Obviously when Jirobo creates his dome and traps the Genin, Naruto using his Sage Chakra, which can't be absorbed, would just punch a hole straight through that dome, and immediately Choji has to fight against Jirobo. They immediately end up encountering the Sound 4 members earlier than in canon, and because of the fact that Tamari and Konkuro aren't on good on good um you know good terms with the leaf village sadly kiba ends up dying and uh, who else was i think shikamaru was saved by tomorrow so shikamaru might end up dying or maybe he might use some big brain play to survive i'm all i'm, all I'm gonna say is shikamaru lives right kiba nobody cares about him so kiba dies you know oh boohoo so sad kiba's dead who cares right but um one thing that does end up happening that is a little sad is that when Lee ends up pretty much trying to go and, you know, fight against kind of, uh, what's his name? Kimi Maru. He arrives and obviously, you know, he takes the brunt of the battle away from Naruto, leaving him time to chase after Sasuke. But this time Lee starts getting pretty much bodied by Kimi Maru. And when Lee's about to die, like he's literally inches away from death, Kimi Maru dies. Just because I don't want Lee to die. I love Lee. Lee's like one of my favorite characters, so... You know, just give me this one thing, guys. Please, just let, let me have it, all right? Anyways, though, Naruto finally ends up encountering Sasuke, and Sasuke's like, <laughs> I now have it, Naruto. I finally caught up. Naruto looks at Sasuke, who finally activates his, you know, three Tomoe Sharingan in each eye, and, you know, looks back at Naruto, or actually two and three, or, or two Tomoe Sharingan in each eye, right? Naruto looks at Sasuke and asks him what he thinks he's doing running away from the village, that all he does is cause problems, and he's gonna bring him back and make sure he gets punished to the highest degree, and that he can bet that Sasuke is not gonna be getting away with this just because he's a new Chiha. Sasuke ends up laughing and saying that he needs to make him go back with him. As Naruto gets enraged, 
thinking that Sasuke clearly thinks that he's better than him or something as he rushes in and Sasuke immediately begins to make it known that he's going to fight as hard as he possibly has to. He throws punches and kicks and it begins just like the battle in the original until eventually Sasuke begins to get overwhelmed by Naruto's sage chakra that he has as usual and Sasuke gets angry smashing his fist onto the ground saying that every time, every time Naruto gets in his way, every time Naruto gets stronger, every time Naruto's there to stop his path from working. He says not this time as he lets the curse mark power take over and this strange energy would finally hit naruto he would realize that this is energy similar to a sage chakra saying that it's nothing but a mere copy as you know he looks to sasuke and says if you want to use borrowed power then allow me as he suddenly activates two of Kurama's tails, as you know, this, this aura of the nine tails appears behind Naruto, and Sasuke shoots a fireball jutsu at Naruto. Naruto screams, and the thing just gets completely dispelled, and Naruto lunges down at Sasuke, punching him into the water, as he begins to pretty much beat Sasuke underwater and Rasengan him straight in the gut, throwing him onto land, where Sasuke coughs out blood, and Naruto just begins to essentially pump him in the face one punch two punch three punch four punch five just going over and over and over until he gets to like 20 hits on his face and sasuke is just a bloody pulp naruto at this point just looks at sasuke and says i guess finally now i can take you back to the village he throws him on his back and using a flying rising kunai pretty much makes it all the way back to the village saying that the rest of the team needs to go off and get saved naruto brought sasuke back and about one week later after Sasuke healed, the punishment would finally begin to be decided. They would say that he's going to be getting about two, one year worth of, you know, supervision and that he's going to not be able to go on missions no more and something like that. Some lenient punishment, right? Naruto, after hearing this, is like, you mean to tell me that the dude like pretty much left the village and that's all you're going to do? Tsunade says that that's all they can do. He's the last Uchiha. They have to keep him around. They have to keep the sharing on in the village they can't let that secret go into another village naruto slams his fist on the table and says no he he's the sole reason that Haruzen died and you're gonna let him get off scot-free just because he's what an uchiha there's many more uh shinobi here that are worth twice as much of the ninja that he is asunade says that she's sorry but that's all she can do Naruto, after hearing this, would say that he hopes that Sasuke runs away because the next time that he encounters him, he's not going to be part of the Hidden Leaf Village and Naruto will have the full access to actually kill Sasuke this time. Post time skip, obviously, which we're now finally going to be getting into, which obviously it's going to basically revolve around two or three years worth of a time skip, right? Naruto comes back to the village. He's around 15, 16 years old, right? And now Naruto has learned much more jutsus. He's perfected the flying rising to the degree of his father. He has pretty much learned a couple more sage jutsu. He has become more OP. His sage jutsu has amped him even more because as I said in the first or second part, I believe, his sage chakra just grows and grows and grows. It doesn't stop. It, it, it's ludicrous. But it is what it is, right? And Naruto, after returning to the village, isn't even hit with something like the Kaze Kage has been kidnapped, right? Because of the fact that Gara, you know, kind of got killed. And it's still going to take about eight to seven years for Shukaku to reincarnate, you know, right? As Chakura. So that's not an issue for Team 7. So essentially, Naruto just stays back in the village and just, you know, does simple missions, right? Until eventually, he is pretty much tasked to help uh, Shikamaru squad with avenging their sensei Asuma. Now, obviously, Sasuke would have been doing his business with Orochimaru, and at this point, he would have been fighting the likes of Deidara, and, you know, Obito would be there, and Sasuke killed Orochimaru, and Sasuke joins um, the... Well, he doesn't join the Akatsuki, but, you know, he's out doing his own thing, building Taka and stuff. And eventually, we end up having this situation where Naruto is pretty much just doing his absolute, you know best out there just pretty much fondling Kakuzu and Hidan making it look like child's play and eventually returning back to the village only to find out that Jiraiya pretty much left to go search for you know pain. Now 
If Jiraiya has the full access to Sage Mode and he's been training with Naruto, we know that Naruto was already stronger than him pre time skip. So Jiraiya would have only had a training partner to make him stronger and help Naruto out with any questions, jutsus, concerns that Naruto would have had, you know, for Jiraiya. But mostly that training jute, that training time period was just used to bond with Jiraiya. So now Jiraiya being gone and going off to lurk for the leader of the Akatsuki, this angers Naruto greatly, right? Because he's like, he went off without me. So he ends up using his flying Raijin mark that he has on uh, Jiraiya and appears next to him, telling him that there's no way he thought this was just going to be happening and Naruto was just going to be fine with it. Naruto appears mid-battle as one of the paths was about to choke uh, Jiraiya. Naruto punches it and just shatters it. And then there's like four paths of pains left, right? Now Jiraiya and Naruto get back to back, and Naruto says that if he would have, you know, left left him to simply fight, he would have died right there. Jiraiya smiles and says he's right about that, as he says that they'll talk about it later. And Naruto says, you're damn right we're talking about it later, as suddenly they get into their fighting stances and pretty much body the paths of pain i mean put it like this obviously we have guidebooks stating that jiraiya if he would have known some more things about the uh the six paths of pain the renegon and stuff like that he would have had a better counter to these powers right but now that it's two people not only that but he actually has full sage mode and now he has the time to tell naruto about his weaknesses he's able to actually overcome the battle and finally meet his student nagato after so many years nagato ends up pretty much telling him why he came to be the way he is naruto forgives him for his transgressions and they end up taking konan and nagato back to the village with nagato explaining where the hideout of the akatsuki is right naruto thinking that he's gonna be able to take anything he he has sage mode right for for god's sake he has that and he has the power of the nine tails nothing could stop him is what naruto's thinking now obviously he has kcm1 now and he has the ability of sage mode so he does have you know the uh, kcm2 power now but even in the original we saw naruto wasn't even touching obito with that and just because he does have a huge amp now i'm going to be saying that they're closer than they were in the original but when naruto ultimately goes off to try to fight off against kisame itachi Nagato, uh, no, not Nagato, but Obito. Um, is there any other members that are there? Yes, Sasori. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think those are it for all the alive ones and uh, Black Zetsu and stuff like that. And I think that Orochimaru comes back to life, so maybe he. No, he wouldn't be there. Kabuto, no, Kabuto wouldn't be there either. So when Naruto appears and tries to pretty much take out the Akatsuki by himself using a. Um, using the intel that nagato gave him obviously the paths of pain would be there trying to help out too right and jiraiya would be there and you know they would have my guy there kakashi sensei there and they're pretty much launching a full-scale attack on the akatsuki before the akatsuki could launch an attack on the village right trying to stop everything before it can get too bad and to put it lightly guys i'm not gonna lie Obito stomps Naruto. Well, it's not a one-sided stomp, but it is definitely not an easy fight. I mean, Obito this time around doesn't have the Rinnegan, right? So it's a much harder fight, but everybody else tries to fight off against Itachi, Kisame, Sasori, and Naruto was focused on the main leader, Obito, right? And while he's fighting Obito, he gets killed. That's all I'm gonna say. Sasuke at this moment is still off, you know, forming Taka, and Naruto ends up getting the boost that he would have gotten from the Sage of the Six Paths, along with, you know, the Sage Mode that he already has. So now we have Six Paths and Jutsu, Normal Sage Mode, KCM, the Trust of Kurama, so now he has all of those things, and Naruto is just a... Dude, Naruto is a mad lad now, like, like, let me just put it that way, Naruto now is just so OP that he boosts like he just shoots in and pretty much just beheads obito he just takes his head off right obito's not immortal right he survived without a heart he survived getting the ten tails ripped out of him but bro he's not gonna have a head i don't know if obito could survive i'm sorry i just don't know about that one so obito's dead now and now naruto's there to pretty much just be an overpowered god and just take out the rest of the akatsuki leading to a fairly evil easy conclusion to the series Eventually, Sasuke ends up trying to go back to the village, you know, after finding out that Itachi already died at somebody else's hands. And when Naruto sees Sasuke, he's like, hey, Sasuke, how you doing, traitor? You know, Sasuke's like, I, I'm, it's not like that no more, Naruto. Like, I've changed. Naruto's like, nah, nah. You, you made me go on so many worthless missions because you thought you were the center of attention. 
you're gonna die dude sasuke's like wait what and naruto i'm sorry boys i i i just want to do this to sasuke some for some reason bro i just want to kill him sometimes like the dude single-handedly it gives me the biggest headaches in the naruto series because of the the the, the odd you know decision making that he has so i'm just gonna be saying for the one time boys naruto kills sasuke I'm sorry it had to be done somebody had to do it and stop riding you know dick riding sasuke for one time so i'm gonna be that person and if you don't like it you know you you, you can smd so uh anyways that's the end of the series um that's pretty much the conclusion of what if naruto was a perfect sage if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to smash that like button and also stay tuned for any of my other naruto series such as what if naruto with crystal release what if naruto with the golden touch and other series along those lines new naruto series will be coming out and i would love to see your suggestions down below in the comments so get to it guys and uh, remember i love each and every single one of you guys stay safe it has been your boy zether and i am out peace